what is up guys sushi man sir here in, in this command the deck tech video i'm going to be making a, a showcasing a deck list that i made for zoo the enchanter or otherwise known as post the enchanter this is actually a, a copy that was given to post malone by wizard of the coast it's basically um zoo the enchanter is basically a four mana um esper human wizard that has a one or that's a one four body um and it has flying and then it reads whenever you the enchanter attacks you may search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost three or less and put it into the battlefield if you do shovel your library as always so what this deck aims to do is it aims to resolve um Zu the enchanter then next turn have it attack and then bring out uh enchantment with converted mana cost three or less onto the battlefield and then con like basically interact through this the deck is not completely um commander centric so it doesn't rely on the commander every turn but if it resolves and if you attack with it it does gain you a lot of value which is the point of most of the most um so then john to decks and then first off we're gonna have it's a combo that i that works with nine lives and solemnity which basically you can do to fall through with um, Zuri Enchanter. So what this does is nine lives is a, it basically gives you nine lives and solemnity. So nine lives is an enchantment that reads it has hexproof. If a source would deal damage to you, put prevent that damage and put an incarnation counter on nine lives. When there are nine or more incarnation counters on nine lives, X solid. When nine lives leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. And this works very well with Solemnity because players can get counters and counters can be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments or lands. So if you have both of these out, nobody can deal damage to you unless they destroy nine lives. But then you lose the game. So you basically, yeah, so that's there's nothing more to it. You just lock yourself out of combat damage. Um, you can't take damage. You can lose creatures, of course, but um, you cannot take damage because nine lives prevents the damage and then you put incarnation counter on them then um we have uh i'll showcase this combo in a tameshi video as well but it's just coincidentally um it's coincidentally just another good combo even in a zero deck so shifting sky reads as uh, shifting sky comes into play choose a color all non-land permanents are the chosen color all non-land permanents are the chosen color and then Wrath of Merit Lage reads whenever it whenever Wrath of Merit Lage comes into the battlefield or into play and tap all red creatures and then the red creatures don't untap during their controller's untap step. So the shifting sky you name red and then with Wrath of Merit Lage none of these creatures can untap and then you have the fairy's mode as the fairy's mode comes into play choose a color creatures of the chosen color cannot a chosen color without flying can't attack you so you with shifting sky you name red then you play merit of the uh, wrath of merit lage their creatures can't untap can't untap and then the fairies moat um for five mana you basically uh, disallow any creature to attack you if it doesn't have flying and that's basically a combat lock if you think about it so um creatures don't untap and um they can attack you if they don't have flying so these three cards um, prevent a lot of combat steps and then we have um so to fit the theme um of in, like it's a very enchanted enchantment centric deck so we used well, i used a lot of artifacts that slow down the game and you'll see in the, uh, the other enchantments have a lot of uh, interaction and removal and like ways to deal with threats but um, a theme in the deck is to stack and slow down the game. One is through Ivan Ivan Mind Sensor. It's a three mana two one bird wizard with flash and flying, um, and reads if an opponent would search a library, that player searches the top four cards of that library instead. So anybody searching for a island, uh, like through a fetch land, through a tutor, they can only search the top four. Um, rule of law is a three man enchantment that reads each player can't cast more than one spell each turn it does slow down any game tremendously um hesitation if any spell is played count that spell or sacrifice and sacrifice hesitation 
So hesitation counters any first spell that was played since it resolved. So it's it's not by choice. Like if even it will even counter your spells, but it does um it, it, like it does cause hesitation to play spells by other players. And then confounding conundrum. It's a two mana enchantment that reads when confounding conundrum enters the battlefield, draw a card, and then. It also reads whenever a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player had one had another land enter the battlefield under their control this turn, they return a land they control to its owner's hand. So if people are ramping, if people are playing a lot of lands, this will bounce all of those lands back to their hand. And that's it for the stacks. I think the other company um I actually wanna cover this, but um another like theme in the deck is um, a ramp. So most of this, we, we've I've managed to fit in a soul ring in this deck, but most of the uh, the mana rocks basically tap for any color. For example, Bonders Ornament taps for any color, Scamander Sphere taps for any color, um, Fountain of Icor taps for any color, and you can play three mana to turn it into a three three dinosaur artifact creature. Letter of Acceptance um, taps for any mana, and then you can pay two mana to sacrifice it and draw a card. Then Mana that just taps for any color mana. Um, spectral Searchlight taps for any mana. Same with Spinning Wheel and Sphere of the Suns. Um, so to the deck is a three color deck, so I had to in add um, artifacts that tap for any mana just to help with um, possible mana issues and color fixing. Then we have okay. This is there's a lot, but this is the interaction. Um, basically, enchantment based interaction for you to tutor through with um, Zuri Enchanter if he attacks. Um, one is Law Law Mage Binding. It's a three mana on enchantment aura that has flash, and you enchant creature, and then enchanted creature can attack or block, and its activated abilities can be activated. So you basically enchant what um, any any creature that has a um, uh, activated ability and then they can't use that. You have seal of seal of cleansing. It's a two mana enchantment that can be tutored with the Zur the enchanter, and then you basically sacrifice it to the sword target artifact or enchantment. Then Casmina transmutation also tutorable with Zur the enchanter. You enchant creature and then it loses all abilities and has base power and toughness one one. So you can cast this onto people's um. And commanders just to completely wipe uh, remove it from the game until it dies it is a one one so it can still be be killed with um a comet like if you attack and he blocks with it you can you can get his commander to die that way and then witness protection it's a one mana in aura enchantment aura that reads enchant creature and enchanted creature loses all abilities and is a green and white citizen creature token or creature with base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, named legitimate business person. So this also um, takes, not takes out, but um, temporarily disables any commander until they die. And then Soul Snare, um, it's a one man enchantment that reads, sac pay one white and then sacrifice Soul Snare. Exile target creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker you control. So if you attack with Zur, Zur the Enchanter and you get this out, if anyone attacks you, you can basically sacrifice one mana. Or you sacrifice, you pay one white mana, and then exile a creature that's attacking you or a planeswalker control. Then Oblivion Ring, as I said, a lot of enchantment based interaction and removal. It's also tutorable through through the enchanter, but Oblivion Ring enters a battlefield and then you exile another token non and permanent. And when Oblivion Ring leaves the battlefield, return the exile card to the battlefield under its owner's control. We have Banishing Light. It's the same story. It basically exiles Dark and Non-Land Permanent until an, uh, until an opponent controls. Uh, I mean, it exiles a Non-Land Permanent until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. We have Sealer of Removal, also tutorable through Institute Enchanter. I think Banishing Light is as well, but... Seal of removal, you sacrifice it to return target creature to its owner's hand. And then cast out. Um, it's a four mana, you exile until it leaves the battlefield. But it also has cycling one, so if you need to fix your like if you need other card draw or if you top deck this and you don't need it anymore, you can basically cycle it. Um eliminate it, but it's a two mana um instant that destroys target creature or planeswalker 
with converted mana cost 3 or less. Then cast down, good for any creature removal that's not legendary. Price of Fame, it's, it costs 2 less if you target a legendary creature. But otherwise, it's a 4 mana destroy target creature and it has surveil too. So this is good if you want to um, kill any opponent's commander for 2 mana and you get to surveil too. In Blink of an Eye, it's a 2 mana instant with Kicker. Um, return target non and permanent to its owner's hand. And then if the spell was kicked, you draw a card. It's good to, it's basically good interaction. Just to bounce something and for 2 extra mana, you get to draw a card off it. And we have Consulate Crackdown. It's it's a strong, very strong card against artifact or like it's artifact heavy decks or um, a board state full of artifacts. So what Consulate Crackdown does is it enters the battlefield and exile all artifacts your opponent's control, and then Consulate Crackdown leaves the battlefield. So that gets rid of all soul rings, all treasure tokens, um, any artifact as long as and until it leaves the battlefield and i think that's pretty strong it's not tutorable through zuri enchanter but it's still very it's, de it's a decent include now the counter magic i think there's eight one is supreme will it it counters target spell unless they pay three or you can look at the top four cards of your library put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order then whirlwind denial it acts as a fluster storm but it's a 3 mana instant that reads for each spell and ability your opponent control, counter it unless it's controlled at pace 4. So if there's like um, a lot of cards on the stack or if someone has a lot of activated abilities, you can just play Whirlwind and all and it will counter each of those abilities and spells. Then Sinister Sabotage, it's a 3 mana counter target spell, but it has Surveil 1. I think it's, I think it's a good, it's good counter magic. I, it's all a lot of play in standard and I'm using it in a lot of Explorer decks at the moment. We have Ertai Scorn, a new Dominari United card. It's a 3 mana counter target spell, but it costs 1 less if an opponent casts, um, casts 2 or more spells this turn. You have Negate, it just counters any non creature spell, no downside or upside, it just counters that. You have Mana Leak, it's a 2 mana counter spell that counters the spell unless its controller pays 3. They have Spell Pierce, um, counters non creature spell unless it's a controller pays 2. You have this spell, it counters an instant. And in a lot of cases, um, those instants that they cast would be removal or other counter magic. And that's it for the counter magic. It's it's efficient and it's budget, so it it not always has like it's not always the best. You can uh, um replace the counter magic to, with other more expensive counter spells. To improve the deck a lot, but it's base it's budget like that's my the budget pool um, card pool that you can use. Then this strategy is basically ways to look for your counter pieces and um, basically tutor and look for count um, combo combo pieces. Sorry. So Omen of the Sea is a two mana enchantment with flash as to all the um, omens and this one lets you scry two and then draw a card and you can also pay three mana and sacrifice it to scry two and it's also um, tutorable through in um, zoo the enchanter if you want to scry through and draw a card you have harazakev right is a five mana um, tutor that lets you search your library for a card put it in your hand then shuffle your library it also has cycling one, so if you don't need it early on, or if you want to draw more lands, you can cycle it. And illicit shipment, it's one of my favorite tutors. It's a five mana um, tutor, but it has casualty three. So you sacrifice a creature with power three or greater, and when you do, you copy the spell. And it's basically, it search your library for card, put it in your hand. And then diabolic tutor, it's a four mana sorcery. That lets you tutor for any card and then for like for a card and then you put it in your hand. Then the other spoil is a three mana instant where you draw two cards and then discard a card. It also has jump start. So if you let's say you play this turn three for its three mana, you draw two, then discard one, and then you gain one life. But if you pay it with jump start, um and actually it lets it gains your life, um equal to the amount of cards discarded this turn 
but if you pay it for its jumpstart cost, you draw two, you discard one card through jumpstart, you draw two cards and then discard another card, and then you can gain two life. And then anticipate, you look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Good, it's a good way to um, look dig through your um, library to look for cards. You have Moldrifter. If you basically want to evoke this for three mana so that it enters the battlefield and you draw two cards, but it's also a great flyer for five mana. Um, Obsessive Teacher is a three mana human wizard. You may tap it and to draw a card and then discard a card. And then for four mana, for two generic, one blue and black, you sacrifice it and then turn target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield. So this acts as a way to fill your graveyard or um, like fix your draws, but you can also reanimate anything. Merfolk Looter, it's a two mana. Um, you draw a card and then discard a card. Same as Stitcher, but it has no other ability. Then Fact or Fiction, you reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. It, it's, I think it's a very good include in basically any blue deck. Um, especially if you're playing from the graveyard. But it also lets you look at the top five and then you can choose what you want. Or what you need and the opponent might even not know what you need. Then scarrow all possibilities. It is a sorcery but it's very good in my opinion. For 2 mana you scry 2 and draw a card. And then it has flash for 5 mana. Then deliberate scry 2 then draw a card. Also instant speed. But unlike um, scarrow all possibilities. It does not have flashback. Then you have opt scry 1 draw a card. Very good for um, like very good for fixing draws. And that's it for the way to look for combos. Now we have, that's actually one alternate win condition, but this sky decker file, um, well actually it's one of the most straightforward win conditions. It's a two mana human versus that's a one that has a one three body and it reads you have no maximum hand size. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have exactly 13 cards in your hand, you win the game. And then for four mana, you can draw a card. So it's, it's good. I actually like this. It's a one mana win condition on its own. And there's no there's not real downside. You can even sink four mana to draw a card. Um and that's it for the alternate win condition. Then we have utility um utility artifacts, enchantments and lands and creatures. So this is Verity Circle. It's one of in my opinion one of the best blue cards in any budget deck. It reads whenever a creature an opponent controls uh, an opponent controls becomes tapped. If it wasn't declared an, as an attacker, you may draw a card. So if any, um, let's say any mana draw is tapped for green mana, any paralyzed ruin, land of elf, elvish mystic, you basically may draw a card. So you can choose if you want to or not. And then for five mana, you can tar tap target creature without flying. So you basically, for five mana, you can tap a creature and draw a card. Then underworld connections, it's a three mana enchant land aura that has. Uh, you can tap the land for, for you can tap the land, pay one life, and then draw a card. It's pretty good. I like this card so much, and it's also tutorable through Zur the Enchanter. Then we have Trial of Evidence. Um, it turns any instant and sorcery into a investigate, which I I completely I love this card so much. Um, Curator's Ward. It's it's also all these enchantments are tutorable through Zur the Enchanter, but Curator's Ward. It's a three mana enchantment aura. Where you enchant target, um, enchant permanent, and then enchanted permanent has hexproof. When enchanted leaves the battlefield, if it was historic, draw two cards. So let's say you play two enchanter on turn uh, on turn four. No, yeah, on turn four, um, you attack with him, and then you tutor curator's curator's ward. You can chant zur the enchanter, and then if the zur the enchanter dies somehow, it's historic, and then you draw two cards. And I think that's a very a decent include to um, a decent card to have in your deck you have stave off target creature gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn it's just to keep the enchanter safe or yeah you know, just keep it safe then tomebound leech it's a three mana zombie wizard that has death touch and life link but 
when it enters the battlefield or deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, then discard a card. And a lot, not a lot of people will want to block this because it does have death touch. And for 3 mana it has a 1-3 body which I think is decent. Then you have Spirited Companion. You can tutor for this with a Soothe Enchanter. But it basically just um, draws you a card if it enters the battlefield. You have Pains here. One of my favorite cards in any, um, any deck that uses black. Um, it's basically a 2 mana human wizard that reads whenever Painter becomes untapped, reveal the top card of your library and put that card into your hand. You lose, li you lose life equal to that card's converted mana cost. So this basically acts as a dark confront um, if it untaps. Otherwise you, it will, like, you attack with it and then when it untaps you draw a card. And I think that's great value. Um, yeah, that's this one of my favorite cards at the moment especially in budget lists and that's it for utility um utility cards and lands um not lands but utility cards then in the deck we have um 12 swamps i actually like this artwork so much it's one of the post malone um secret layer this is the swamp we have this deck contains 12 swamps uh, we have 12 planes also a secret layer of um post malone and then we have 13 islands, also one of the secret layers, and it features his tattoo. Um, but yeah, that's that's it for the deck. Um, it was a blast building this, and I actually might build this in paper. Not exactly this list, I might go non-budget, but it's, it's just a great commander, and it's, in my opinion, a great deck. It's a, a, lo a lot of fun to pilot, and um, it's very easy to build on a budget. But yeah guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, um, check out my social media, I haven't posted on Instagram and Twitter in a while, I've been quite busy with some in, in real life stuff, but yeah guys, I hope you guys enjoyed.